This video was made in partnership with CuriosityStream. Team strategies are among the most effective things players can do in the game. Teaming up can enable players to tackle challenges far outside their ability to do so alone, and allows players to cover each other's weaknesses. In addition to things like pack hunting, there's another type of team strategy worth discussing, parenting. Parenting is a high level strategy that can allow new players to flourish when they'd normally be easy pickings for mid to high level players. While team strategies aren't super new, they also haven't always been the norm. Today we're going to discuss how the meta of team strategies developed and it all started during the Permian meta, the expansion directly preceding the worst balance patch of all time, the Great Dying. Dimetrodon was one of the top tier builds during that time, but what was it about them that gave them such an advantage during the Permian meta? Dimetrodon had relatively normal base stats, nothing too crazy here. Even though it's part of the proto-mammal guild, called Tenapsids, it also shared a lot of traits with the basic dinosaur build. Its short legs meant its mobility stat maxed out fairly low, its power stat was great for the time, but not revolutionary, it had low stealth due to its huge, conspicuous sail, and its intelligence and defense were pretty standard for its time. The most notable ability in its arsenal was its sail, which granted it a few perks. First, it granted a huge intimidation bonus, because it made the player look like they were in a much higher weight class than they really were. This helped prevent attacks from other players, but honestly, Dimetrodon was the top tier build at that time, and everyone knew it, so the intimidation wasn't that useful. The sail also prevents the player from being grabbed from behind and flipped upside down, which can be extremely important in order to avoid getting your weak point attacked for massive damage. The sale's most important job was to manage stamina regeneration. Cold-blooded builds do not regenerate stamina automatically, but rather require external heat to recharge. A sale allows the user to capture a large amount of solar energy quickly, letting the user quickly refresh themselves for the next time that they need a quick burst of speed or strength. Surprisingly, this ability hasn't been used too many times by other builds, possibly because it increases the size of your character's hurt box by quite a bit. All of this is fine, but none of this is exceptional by any means. No, what made Dimetrodon top tier was that it was one of the first builds to incorporate parental care into its playstyle. Players are at their most vulnerable at the start of the game, during the respawn process and before they level up. In fact, one highly effective strategy to score easy points is just to loot a player's spawn point and interrupt the respawn process before it completes. Of course, the obvious counter strategy to this would be for max level players to guard the spawn point from attacks, at least until the respawn is finished. Surprisingly, it took until patch 1.1.6 for players to realize how important and effective this strategy is. Before that, even the top tiers mostly left their nests unguarded, and they were easy pickings for an experienced player. The Metrodon was one of the first to implement this strategy, and it did so to great effect. Many of the other mid and high tier builds during the Permian meta relied heavily on raiding nests, and Dimetrodon was one of the few builds that actually made this difficult for them. Aside from defending its nests from attacks, Dimetrodon players also perfected the art of making sure new Dimetrodon players spawn in with a full HP bar. They do this by incubating the eggs themselves rather than just laying them and hope they don't freeze or overheat, which would cause the new players to spawn in with some pretty heavy debuffs, if at all. But instead, they spawn in ready to run, which is important because the parental care meta was not very developed at the time. Once they had hatched, the hatchlings would actually aggro the other Dimetrodon. It wasn't until far later that players started also protecting low-level players too. But once that strategy started getting some traction, it wasn't long before just about every build in the game adopted it and started incorporating it into their playstyles. This strategy is one of the main reasons that mammals became the dominant guild so quickly after the dinosaur extinction balance patch. They invest such a large amount of time into new players that by the time they're done with their tutorial levels, they're already powerful enough to hold their own in combat. But it's not just mammals that now invest time into their offspring. During the Mesozoic expansion, dinosaurs also picked up this technique. The large predatory dinosaur builds were nearly unstoppable one-on-one, -on -one, so low-level herbivore mains didn't stand a chance against them. However, herbivore players quickly discovered that team defense strategies were quite effective at keeping their low-level players alive. Even though most dinosaurs eventually got banned, the techniques that they developed persisted in the avian faction, 
which has to carefully tend to their new players until they level up enough to unlock the flight ability. But while birds do it well, mammals are the pioneers of the teamwork and parenting strategies. The Synapsid Guild, which eventually became the Mammal Guild, continued to perfect their techniques all throughout the Mesozoic expansion and through the Cenozoic too, and in particular were the first guild to unlock a special ability called Live Birth, which lets players bring their respawn points with them instead of having to build a nest to hide egg spawn points in. This is a huge advantage because now, to spawn new players in, the player only needs to stay alive rather than protect an objective for months. And at this point, the mammal player base is known for putting an absolutely massive amount of effort into raising up new mammal players. They have the longest respawn times, which actually lets players spawn in having already leveled up a few times. They also produce a substance that causes new players to level up quickly, which gives them a huge advantage over builds like arthropods, reptiles, and amphibians, which have to find sources of XP on their own right from the start. This isn't to say that none of those classes have adopted team strategies or parenting, though. Plenty of reptiles, and even arthropods, engage in at least some form of defending new players or team attacks. But nothing compares to the parenting power of the Mammal Guild. Mammals also get a rage power-up when they defend their young, a buff so powerful that for even the most OP builds in the game, challenging an enraged mother player often means game over. So the next time you see a Mammal player bodying its competition, you'll at least understand the abilities that grant them such a competitive edge in their early game, and you'll know precisely which players pioneered these techniques and strategies too the Synapsids. If you'd like to learn more about the evolution of parental care in Synapsids, there's an excellent documentary called Leaps in Evolution that I highly recommend you check out. It features some incredible visuals of Synapsids and dinosaurs in their fight to survive, some of the best I've ever seen in fact. It's available for streaming right now on CuriosityStream, the best place on the internet for high quality non-fiction content. It was created by the man behind the Discovery Channel and features some of my all-time favorite paleo documentaries such as Walking with Dinosaurs, Out of the Cradle, and of course, Leaps in Evolution. The subscription is $2.99 a month, but if you sign up using the special link in the description of this video, you can get a whole month free and you'll be supporting my channel in the process. Thanks so much for watching and thanks especially to my patrons on Patreon. Until next time, good luck out there.